Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Betty Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. Got a wonderful message that I have for you here today. It is coming to you live from station WEBM. That's wonderful. Eddie B. Marcus operating smack down from the top of the sky, meaning the spiritual level, right to wherever you are. And I hope this message comes to you and insaturates your being so that it becomes such a part of you as the blood that flows through your veins. And when it's all said and done, that you will either like this, comment on it, or subscribe not only to this channel, but to the message of this channel. Thank you so very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you some things and I took a note because uh, I want to make sure that I get it in in the short time that I have for it. And it goes something like this. Why is Trump meeting with Putin? That's a, a subject matter that I was thinking about attacking and I wasn't sure. So I went on and I was taking notes from the spirit within and I just jotted that title down. It might lead to something. But there's, here's what I really want you to know. Bullies exist because the people don't fight back. They'll find some reason, some excuse. Bullies win on the playground and bullies win in government. Now right now some governments are bullying the nation and the world going into perhaps a conference. Now check this out. The President of the United States is going into a conference. Two men Putin and Trump scamming to conquer the world. Now you can see Trump doing that. You can see Putin doing that. And since Trump knows and has given all notice that Russia is his friend because Russia giving money when the U.S. wouldn't give him money. So you know you're going to always go with what's feeding you. So the main problem is that they themselves are guilty of the same acts. Now what I'm saying is that the reason that he's able to get over on the people of this nation in doing that is because the people of this nation does this all the time themselves. Now it's just that as things affect people, as they spread it out and other people start feeling the pain, then they start waking up back like it had never happened before. But it's happening all over, all over the place and people have found reasons to excuse it. They have allowed others to be victimized by such bullying. And now that it happened to them, oh my God. Now, what happens? Because you're fake, you give in to the bully. Because now the bully can expose you. For if you had not been a compromiser with the bully, the bully never would have gotten where the bully is. And so there's not too much you can say except change your way. And you must really change your way. You see, the citizens of America must admit their faults where society is concerned. You must go further than that. The citizens of America must forgive themselves. They're not the only ones. Everybody's messed up and messing up everywhere all over the earth. Now you must start over. And this time do the right things. And a bully is stopped in its very track. So whatever Trump and Putin was coming up with, you can stop them in their tracks. And you can bet your last money that whatever they talked about had nothing positive for you. You see, those things that are positive toward the people, they are revealed, they are exposed. But the secrets, the ugly stuff that they're going to do to you to do what they really want to do, they do that in secret. That's the purpose of secret societies. That's the purpose of bone, skull and bones. You know, when they asked those guys in the White House not too long ago about their position with a secret society, they said, oh, we can't talk about it. Now, <laughs> what's done in the dark, you don't want the people to know about that. And so when you got two leaders 
they you call them narcissists. I don't know what they are. I just know they're power hungry, and they don't have anything that will stop them but you, the people who are submitted to them. And when they go in the back room talking stuff, you can bet your last money it doesn't mean you any good. And when your head spokesman for your system of government go in a back room and talk to somebody about anything, you can bet your last money it doesn't do you any good. You can bet your last money it doesn't do you any good. Let me say that one more time. You can bet your last money. It doesn't do you any good. But what I am tired of is that I'm tired of living poor. You see, I realize that you have to resist the system as it is if you want to make something better, even if that's your thought. But you cannot talk about creating something new when you're dragging and holding on to that which you're trying to condemn. So I've been sacrificing. I want all of the beautiful things of life, just like you do. I don't want anybody associated with me having to worry about any type of career. I want that to be there laid out for them. And all the education they need to make them best that they can be, I want it for them. And if they ever get sick and need some kind of health care, dental care, I want it for them and I want the best for them. There is no doubt about that. And because I want that for them, I recognize I can't prevent that from for anyone else because in my spirit I believe that's what everybody wants and so I've been waiting on you who say you know Jesus I've been waiting on you who say you a child of God born again filled with the spirit and the Holy Ghost I've been waiting on those of you who say you're good people just good people I've been waiting on you to be good I've been waiting on you to stand up I've been waiting on you to say we are going to make the change and make it. I've been waiting on you to do that. But in the meantime, all the things are just falling down all around me. The people in the community say they've never felt such hopelessness before in their lifetime. They are feeling defeated. They're saying they're just tossed by the wind. They don't know what to do. they got no direction. You can't trust now the Republicans, you don't know what's going on there. You can't trust the Democrats because they really got nothing to say of except the old story, and it got us here. So where else can you turn? I feel, ladies and gentlemen, there's nowhere to turn but to yourself. Now, when you turn to yourself, you can turn to yourself in two, diff two, in two ways. You can start out with a challenge to everybody, claiming you are supreme, and go forward that way. Or you can come out with a challenge to yourself that everybody is important. And no one is more important than the other. And you commit to pursue your life by being who you are and benefiting from what you are. Until we can do that as individuals. Until we can do that as individuals, we are always going to be looking for somebody to do it for us. And nobody's going to do it for us because they're going to always want a percentage. They're going to always want to cut. And when they're cutting from you and cutting from you and cutting from you, after a while, they're living bigger than all you guys together. Why? Because they cut in on you. What that mean? That mean they robbed you. And you sold it to them just for the 90%. 90% is not good enough. Only 100%. And so what I'm saying to you, is that yes, you have the right to disbelieve anything Donald Trump come out and tell you. In fact, based upon his character and the way he presented himself, you've got a right to disbelieve everything he says, and everything he says turn it around to mean just the complete opposite. You've got a right to do that because that's how phony this man has been. And you don't have to put your trust in that. But unless you're willing to put your trust in yourself, then you might well leave it with Donald Trump. Because if you just give it to somebody else to do it, it's going to be a little bit different. But nevertheless, it's still going to be uh, a rope around your neck. So all I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, is it's time we've been brought to the, the pit for us to see that we are with, like the prodigal son, he not the 
troughs withhold. We are there when we compare where we should be and we ought to be. And so I'm asking if there's any way, any way within your soul, within your spirit, that you can see being nice and kind and wonderful and loving to every human being that you can imagine on earth. If you can think about that, think about what it would mean for everybody to have that kind of commitment from one another, the strongest family ever imagined, and then turn around and act that way. I mean, truly act that way. Can you imagine what a world this would be? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is what uh, I want to talk about as asking you to allow me to be the next senator from the state of Minnesota. I want to take this message all across the nation. I'm concerned about the whole United States of America having their survival necessities met every last one of them guaranteed by one another to one another. And that we here in America can begin to live with freedom and take the monkey off our back. That's what I'm committed to. And I hope that there are others out there in America committed to the same thing. And I tell you what, if you are, you better start stepping because time is passing. And that we always know that just because the election ends doesn't change the truth. And so we don't have to wait until another election. We can demand what we want while we're out of office. We don't have to be in office. I'll admit, sometimes there's a little bit more help. But you don't have to be in office to bring about change. So don't get panicky. Start talking about I can't win. We never lose as long as we're able to stand. And so we stand. Till next time, this is Eddie Marcus saying goodbye.